Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Today we are looking at beer or as most people call it malt beer and this is a free non photorealistic renderer that is now made available for everyone using Blender. Beer is a short form for Blender Extended Expressive Renderer. This is an open source development campaign that is going on and it's just very interesting to see the beautiful things that they're doing. And we talked about the development and the release of the version one and some of you guys suggested that we take a look at it. Now the beautiful thing about this is it's free so you can actually go ahead and download this. Now for those who would like to play with this, this is supported for both Windows and Mac and once you want to get it you can go over to the github and right here you will see that version one was just released you know the final version one was just released a couple of hours ago so click right here and that will take you over to the place where you can download this stuff so you can download the windows version the mac version and also the linux version now once you download this you need to also download the shaders now for those who want to read more about colors and understand how colors work and the whole fundamentals that they had to consider while creating this add-on you can actually find this here and with that downloaded we are definitely going to dive directly into Blender and take a look at how this works. So with Blender simply open, you need to go over to your edit, go over to your preference and do the installation. And unlike regular add-ons that once you press N on your keyboard, you get to find them here. This is a renderer. So what this means is right here within your rendering section is where you'll be able to find it. Now you see it's right here and it's registered as more. You have your object selected. So let's go ahead and, you know, smooth shade this, make that subdivision thingy going on here. And let's crank this one all the way up to four and go right over to where we have our materials we can load the shaders in now loading the shaders in is very very easy as all you need to do is click on this button locate the shaders and you'll see that we have a couple of shaders that we can work with first off let's talk about the basic mesh so the basic mesh shader is you know like one of the coolest shaders that you can work with and this is like you know more like the very basic shader that you can work with right here so if you jump over to your rendering you probably notice that you don't get to see much stuff happening now there are several things that are responsible for this so one of them is here so you need to go over to your color management section you already noticed that we have this set to malt go over to your color management change this from change this from filmic to standard now this is one another thing you can do is you can also select this which is your light go over to your light section and change this to sunlight so once you do that you would now be able to notice that you have this so once we grab that you know we have that selected go over to where we have our material and from here you can start making changes for those who want to get more ambience on their material you can do that if you want to drop that down you can also drop this down if you want the ambience to be changed you know you want to change the color of the ambient of course you can also do all of these things depending on what you want and then you can also change the diffuse so how do you attach lines how you can add lines is very simple so for that you can also click on this button right here and this is going to also pop up a brand new you know window and you can simply select basic line mesh remember the first one was like basic mesh so we're getting this other shader click on accept and right now you can now go in and throw in some lines so we have some wheat one throw in some wheat right there and you can see that going there so for those who wants to do this cool stuff you can actually go in and start doing that now let's actually talk about something because i know a couple of you guys will be like uh, blender already has this remember one time where we talked about how you can convert any model to grease pencil and how we said you could do that was simple click on the model that you want go over to object go over to convert and convert this to grease pencil so most of you guys will be like yeah this has already existed in blender but now the the beautiful thing with this is contrary to what you have here i'm not saying this is not good or you know it's not great but contrary to what you have here this is a is a little bit limiting with some stuff for example there are some shaders that comes with the beer tool or the malt tool and uh, that you cannot be able to do or you have to go in and start tweaking this stuff so for now what you have with grease pencil is you rely on the grease you know your shading and then you rely on the fuel and also the gradient so right here if you go all the way down to the fuel style you have the gradients so these are more like the ones that you have you know you have the solid gradient and texture these are more like the ones you have right now but then if you want to also re-achieve the same thing 
in Blender and using the mold, you can take a look at these shaders and work with them. So if you want to use textures, if you want to throw in some rims, if you want to do some mixing, some caps, and for advanced line, I think we didn't talk about that. So if you need advanced lining mesh, we have a couple of lining tool which you can use. So we can increase what we have here, which is going to be the width minimum, but you will not be able to appreciate this. So real quick, let's do a very simple cup or a bow model just to take a look at how the advanced line really works. So at this point, you can go in and you can tight this down, you know, bring this all the way back up. You can also play with the width if this is what you're going for. So you'll be able to see that. So let's, you know, just unselect this. So you'll be able to see that. So you, you know, you have all of the shaders that you want. You have all of these things at your fingertips. Now, one more shader I would like to talk about before we leave is the displacements. So funny enough, there is a very cool, brilliant displacement shader. So what I'm going to do is I would select this and let's just move this to the side and let's create something. So let's just uh, shift and A, jump right over here, get the UV sphere. UV sphere looks good. And if you don't have any shader on your model, this is exactly how it looks. Okay. So what do we need to do? We create a brand new material, click on the add shader and you will see that we have displacement. So if you click on the displacement and accept that displacement right here, you will start noticing that we have this. All right, this looks pretty cool. So if you go all the way down, you remember we already have the default ambient color and diffuse color. So you can also make those changes regardless. You can go in and play with the wave. So let's subdivide this one a little bit more. So select that, scroll all the way down, or you know, just hit on subdivide and let's make this subdivide by good number. We can go right here and change the frequency. So we can make that frequency about something like so. So you can see that and then we can play with this and get some good result. Now, for those who like to make some animation, you can easily do this. So just click right here, turn this on, and I'm going to set this to zero, right click, add one frame, jump all the way to 60. Let's set this one to 10 and we would set this to 60. So right now, once we bounce this all the way back, press the playback button, you now have yourself this beautiful stuff. So if you want to go in and add that extra line, you want to, you know, play with this. And remember the whole idea for this tool is to create that non photorealistic rendering. Okay. And it just makes sense to see that it has some of these beautiful shaders that you will be able to work with. Now you can go in and, you know, create a simple line, change that line to 3d. So we already talked about the fact that blender 2.91 comes with this beautiful feature. So you can add a simple Bezier or a simple curve, convert that to 3D, play with the bevel tool or bevel feature that exists with Blender 2.91. And you can use this for some very, very interesting, interesting effects. In situations where you like to play with the ambient occlusion shader or the curvature shader, you can also find these things here. So we can click on the curvature mesh, click on accept, and we are going to have this one here. So it's just, you know, it's just very nice to see that you have this going on. So you can play with the ramp as well. So you can crank this up, crank this down, and you can just simply use this to drive your mesh. You can also go over to your modifier section and you can throw in any relative modifier that you might want to use. So in our situation like now, we have this modifier and we can easily go ahead and use it. Now, something else which I think I need to show you guys is when it comes to the world background, you can also change the background color so you can make it all the way down you can crank it all the way up so for those who want to get this if you go over to this link in the description you can read more about the colors you can see there's a lot and lot of you know things written about colors it just makes a lot of sense why this is beautiful and then if you want to see the milestone of what they are doing you can read up on the milestone if you want to see some of the cool stuff that they are doing right now and you want to join the campaign for their fundraiser you can also do this one right here and that's definitely going to be about it link to these the discord and other socials is going to be in the description so you can go through and check them out and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace